Hello friends. In today's video, we will learn about the element method in horizontal design. So when you choose the alignment by layout option, you will have two methods for that. Uh, one is PI method and one is element method. The element method is subdivided into five, par five tools. The first is about uh, line utilities. The second is about curve utilities. The third is transition with uh, line utilities. The fourth one is transition with curve utilities. And the fifth one is about the uh, transitions, different transition utilities. Also, this five menu is uh, subdivided into three categories. So, uh, and if you see, the one is fix, second is float, and third is free. So, if the object is non-editable from both the side, then it is called a fix object. If the object is editable from both the sides, then it is called a free object. And if the object is uh, editable from one side, then it is called the floating object. So I will show you the detailed example for this and how this will work. I will sh uh, show you different situations and uh, which tool can be used for which situation, which location the, that gives the best solution. I will show you in these three examples. For this examples, I am assuming this cross section, which is having symmetrical road and uh, five meter width on both sides. Now, uh, I will start with this one. So in this one, there are two constraints and I want to produce a design as close as to this constraints. So how can I do that? Uh, I will create a new alignment. Uh, this is the constraint. I have kept five meter offset from this constraint. So uh, from my center line, I will get minimum five meter as required in the cross section. I will create one fixed line on this side and I will create one fixed line on this side. With this, I am getting five meter uh, at this constraint location. So there is no extra space uh, wasted here. Now uh, I will use in this situation free curve. I will select first curve, select next curve and I will give less than 180 and 400 radius. You can see my curve is starting from this location and ending at this location. So still I am having uh, this much of uh, space available to shift this curve near to this constraint. So in the tabular editor, I can change the radius from 400 to let's say 450. You can see I am close to this one. If I do it 500, sorry, 500, then you can see I am going inside the constraint. Uh, up to this point, I want to keep it 5 meter. So this is the optimum solution for this location. This free curve with the 450 radius. So this is one condition. Now in the second condition, uh, I am having different constraints and uh, I want to pass my alignment from here. So this is the exit width which is required for the cross, -sex cross section. So I will create new alignment for this location. In this, I'm going to use the float method. Uh, first, I will create a fixed line. Now, I will use one float curve. Uh, I will take radius of 200. Now, I want to uh, pass from here exactly from center of this. So, I will hold the shift key. And this will give me a different option. I will select mid between two points. I will select first point and second point. So now the alignment is exactly going from the center of this. And this is float object. So if I change the radius from 200 to 300, it will not change this point. This radius will change on this side only. So this is the floating object. Now I will draw another floating object from this point and I will give radius of again say 2000 
and I will finish. Uh, I I can provide compound co or reverse co. So in this case, I want a reverse co, and I will end alignment here. So you can see this floating object is extended up to this point, and uh, another curve of 200 radius has been drawn, and this point is also float. So these two are float points. So and these are floating with this line. So if I do any changes in this line, let's say I will move this line here. So you can see the radiuses are constant. Also, these floating points are constant. So there is no change in the floating points and the alignment has been modified. So this way you can save lots of time and you can fix your constraint. In the third example, I will show you how you can use uh, reverse curve this is the two constraints and i want to join these two alignments with the maximum radius so i can provide a highest design speed so how i can do that i will create a new alignment uh, first i will draw a fixed line at this location i will draw another fixed line at this location now in curve with spiral there is one option you can do reverse spiral, co spiral, spiral, co spiral. So I will choose this option. I will select the first point, select the second point. Uh, these are the 5 meter offset of the constraint. So our alignment will go in such a way that there is no impact on the constraints. Now I will choose the radius of C200. Then I will choose uh, for the first co 20 20 meter transition. For the second curve, I will also choose 200 and 20 20 mixture transition. So, these are the options for plotting this curve. So, I will choose pass through point and I will choose it uh, at center of this two uh, midpoint between this and this. So, it is approximate center at this. Now, I can modify the radius see what maximum radius i can get so with 500 i am getting this and my curve is starting at this location it is going inside this so on this side i will reduce it to 390 or 380 and for this uh, curvature i will check what transition length is required and based on that i will modify the design so this type of optimum solutions you can create with uh, this uh, options. I hope these three examples give you some guidance to on the element method. Thanks for watching this video and you can sub subscribe this channel for getting more videos on Civil 3D. Thank you.